want to die, do ya? Good, because today we're going to allay your fears and demystify the dying process to give you the confidence to die because you deserve something better than this stuff. Okay, we've got a lot to cover here today, but I want all of this information to be in one convenient package. So I've broken it down to chapters and sections by type of dye. You can just skip to whatever part is interesting to you. In addition, if you have any further questions about any of the processes in this video, just drop down into the comments and let me know. I'd be happy to help you. Let's start with my absolute favorite dye. Acid dyes. Do you wanna dye some silk? Do you wanna dye some wool? You need acid, man. Acid dyes are vibrant, easy, and will bring you peace and love. They'll dye any protein fibers, including silk, wool, alpaca, mohair, feathers, and nylon. Nylon? It's true, nylon is chemically similar to silk. Far out! Besides nylon, Acid dyes won't stick to any fiber that's synthetically made or comes from plants. They're also totally safe and non-toxic. Great for the home dyer. It's so safe that you can use your exhausted dye bath to water your plants, which means it's great for our planet. And certain acid dyes are even used for our food, man. That's right. These little babies are made from acid. Groovy. Please do not consume your acid dyes. These dyes are called acid not because they're gonna send you on a crazy trip, man, but because they use acid as a fixative. Boiling, bubbling, lethal acid. So lethal you don't have any of it in your pantry right now. If you hate the smell of vinegar, do a lot of dyeing, or just make bath bombs at home like I do, then you can also use citric acid, which is much more economical than vinegar in large doses. The technical stuff. The acids help lower the pH of the environment, allowing the dyes to bond to the protein of the fiber. This is done via hydrogen and ionic binding and van der Waals forces, whatever that is, man. Pros and cons. Pros, vibrant, permanent color, fast, easy dye process, light and wash fast in cool and warm water, concentrated and economical, no additional chemicals to purchase, low to no waste, huge array of color choices. Cons, requires a hot water dye bath. Some colors are harder to get than others. Some colors are pricier than others, but they're still a heck of a lot cheaper than RIT. Supplies, small scale, kitchen scale, dedicated spoon, container for pasting, container for mixing, dedicated thermometer, dedicated dye pot large enough for fabric to move freely, vinegar or citric acid, acid dye. I recommend using Dharma Trading's acid dye. They are by far the most economical of all the acid dyes out there. For example, this half ounce jar of Jacquard acid dye in golden ochre costs $3.85 on Dharma Trading, and this two ounce jar of Valentine Blush costs $2.65. First, weigh your fabric on a kitchen scale and notate the weight. You wanna wash your fabric in hot water in either Synthropol or blue colored Dawn. Must be the blue kind. Synthropol's better because it's low foam, but Dawn's cheaper and smells a heck of a lot better, but use it sparingly in your machine or it'll explode into bubbles. DT now has a cheaper, greener option called textile detergent, which I'm going to try instead of Synthropol next time I need some. Add some of your detergent of choice and then fill your container with hot water. Then add your fabric. This is cream colored worsted wool from Burnley and Trowbridge. Regular viewers, can you guess what we're about to dye? Give it a good swish and let it soak for a while. This is wool. You definitely want to do this by hand and not the machine or you'll end up felting the fibers. Silk's probably better hand washed too, but nylon you can throw in the machine. Give it a good squeeze and rinse out your detergent. Meanwhile, in a different room or better outside so airborne particles won't dye your wet fabric, we'll batch up the dye. Use a scale that goes to the hundredth decimal point. 
Give your die a good shake with the lid on. Multiply your dry fabric weight by 1.5% to get the amount of dye you need to use. For a lighter color, you can use less, and for a darker color, you can use more. Note that I'm using the Jacquard die for this particular project, but the ratios and process are the same for the DT dies. It's rare I use this particular brand, but they just happen to have the exact color I wanted, and I didn't feel like faffing about with color mixing. Now add a little water to your container and mix or paste it together until all the dye is dissolved. I should be wearing gloves for this. Acid dye especially, you want to wear gloves because it's meant to dye protein, i.e. your skin. The table I'm less worried about because it's enameled metal, but best to use protection from your surface as well. Then add your paste to your other container and stir in the stuff you missed. Add your dye to a pot of room temperature water. I like to dip my containers in to make sure I get all of the dye. Give it a good stir to make sure everything is dissolved. Then add your wet fabric to the dye pot and stir so it's evenly distributed. In this one case, because acid dye is fairly non-toxic, I'm being bold and using my probe thermometer, but really, you should be using your dedicated one, just like you should be wearing gloves. Turn on the heat and gradually bring up the temperature of your dye bath, 180 degrees Fahrenheit for silk, 200 degrees Fahrenheit for wool. Keep stirring y'all. The more you stir, the more even the color of your fabric. Once you hit the right temp, add a quarter cup of distilled white vinegar or a tablespoon of citric acid per pound of fabric. Move your fabric out of the way before adding it to the dye bath or you'll get splotches. The dye will immediately begin exhausting into the fabric. Maintain your heat and stir frequently for half an hour or up to an hour for darker colors. Or until the dye completely exhausts. If the dye doesn't seem to want to exhaust, add a little more vinegar or citric acid to your bath. It's not going to hurt anything. If it's still not exhausting well, then you probably just use too much dye and make note of that for yourself for next time. Once it's done, remove it from the heat and let it cool until you can handle it without burning your fingers. Rinse it in warm water. Not hot, y'all. Hot water breaks the bond for acid dyes. And a little of your detergent to get rid of any excess dye. Unlike the other dyes in this video, there shouldn't be too much excess. If you guessed we were dyeing my 17th century pizza stays, you win! I love the color of this. It's so bold and vibrant. The binding and the cords of these stays were also hand dyed using our next type of dye. Drum roll, please. Fiber reactive dyes. Time for science! If you come out of this video ready to try one of these dyes and one of them only, let it be fiber reactive because it's the cheapest and most versatile of the group. Fiber reactive dyes are your go-to for vibrant, never fading cover on all cellulosic fibers, including cotton, linen, hemp, and rayon. They'll also dye silk and wool, but that's a more advanced technique and not for beginners. Technical stuff. Fiber reactive dyes adhere to cellulosic fibers using covalent bonds, one of the most basic and strongest of all chemical reactions. They call me Bond. Covalent Bond. The dye is then fixed with soda ash, which raises the pH of the dye bath increasing the level of negative hydrogen ions, which are then used in the chemical reaction process to bond the dye to the fiber, leaving you with a completely wash fast, permanent coloring of your fabric. The addition of non-iodized salt in your dye bath allows for a stronger magnetic bond between your dye and your fabric. I use this dye for almost every big project I do on this channel. It's very useful. Pros and cons. Pros, vibrant, permanent color, light and wash fast, concentrated and economical, huge array of color choices, uses lukewarm water, large batches can be done in the washer. Cons, have to purchase additional, but low cost, fixatives, more complicated, but not difficult process, dye bath deteriorates after a set period of time, uses a lot of water. Supplies, small scale, kitchen scale, dedicated spoon, container for pasting, container for mixing, five gallon bucket for up to a yard of fabric, large 20 gallon bucket or washing machine for larger, the washing machine will give you the most even color, but I can't use mine because it drains between each cycle and even if you reset it. That's a really good thing to check before you decide to use your washing machine to dye. Non-iodized salt, 
soda ash. Fiber reactive dye. I recommend using Dharma Trading's Fiber Reactive Procyon dyes. They're cheap and they have 146 colors to choose from. And a lot of the times they have a lot of seasonal stuff come out as well for a limited time. If you're noticing a pattern in my purchases, that's because Dharma Trading is the go-to for dyes. I'm not sponsored by these folks, but I have been using them for more than 10 years. They have the best prices, the most selection, their customer service is great. And on top of that, there's a bunch of tutorials and DIY projects and all sorts of things on their website that are available for free. You can also get all your other dye supplies there, including Synthropol, Urea, and Soda Ash. A pound of Soda Ash runs about $2, and my five pounder goes for about six, although the shipping on that gets a little pricey because of the weight. Even with the shipping added, however, you can get five pounds on DT for 20 bucks-ish. And on Amazon, you get two pounds for 15. As a beginner though, just go for the one pound bag. That's all you'll need for a long time. Unless you do a lot of machine dyeing in which you want to get the five pounder because it'll go much quicker. Don't worry about the urea though until maybe your third or fourth fiber reactive dye. It's useful and handy to have, but it's not necessary to do the process. Just worry about the soda ash. Where are we at with weight for this? All right, we're at 15 ounces, which is just slightly under a pound. You can adjust your color depending on how much dye you use. I will say DT's green dyes in particular tend to run very blue, so it would be smart to buy some lemon yellow, the primary, for over dyeing if you're wanting green. DT has a general estimation of how much soda ash, water, and dye to use if you don't need an exact color. But if you'd like a very precise measurement, they also have a dye estimator where you can just pick the color you're using, add in the weight of your dry fabric, and poof, it'll give you a very precise weight of dye to use. Links to all of this in the description, as well as their excellent dyeing tutorials. For these two particular batches I filmed, I'm just using the standard of about a tablespoon per pound of fabric. Give your dye a good shake, and remember to do this in a well-ventilated area, away from any cellulosic fibers, to avoid any airborne dye sticking to them. Outside is better. Some dyes are harder to dissolve than others, specifically those with reds and darker yellows in them. You can dissolve a tablespoon of urea in a cup of hot water and use that to make your dye slurry, which I'm opting to do in this instance since I'm using the fuchsia red dye. If you don't want to buy this, just run it through some cheesecloth or a spare bit of muslin when pouring the dye into the dye bath to catch the undissolved dye. Measure out your dye by either volume or weight and add it to your mixing container. Then add some hot water and paste up your dye. Once it's dissolved, add it into your urea mixture or hot water and make sure everything is combined. Probably should be wearing gloves again. Whoops. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to put the non-iodized salt, non-iodized, don't use the iodized stuff, into our water. Here's my bucket of water. It is lukewarm, which means around 105 degrees, which basically means I filled it up on the hot tap in my bathtub. You're supposed to use a cup of salt per gallon of water, and I have approximately three gallons. Okay, so then I'm gonna take a spoon and I'm gonna stir it till all the salt is dissolved. Add your dissolved dye into the dye bath and stir to combine. Take your pre-washed wet fabric and add it to the bath. Stir frequently for 20 minutes. Now it's time to add the soda ash. Pull your fabric up and out of the way. You're going to add a third of a cup of soda ash per three gallons of water, but we're going to add it in three batches over about 15 minutes. I've since started dissolving the soda ash in a cup and a half of hot water first before adding it to my bath. So add a third of it and stir, then put your fabric back in. Once your soda ash has been distributed and 15 minutes total passed, continue to stir frequently for half an hour for lighter colors or an hour for darker. You can't leave it in for much longer than that because at that point the dye has deteriorated enough that you're not gonna get much of a difference. I usually time it in about five minute increments as far as stirring to get a nice even color. The big tub does a much more even dye than the bucket. When the color is set, rinse under cool water until it runs clear, then run it through a cycle or two in the washing machine. There will be excess color in there, so don't skip this step. 
Then finally, run it in a hot water cycle in your machine using Synthropol or Blue Dawn. And here's the finished fabric, which I used for the lining of my mullet stays. I also used fiber reactive dye to dye the background of the stomacher, the shoulder straps, and cords of these to make a completely custom and gorgeous pair of stays. Union dyes. Four score and seven years ago, our dye fathers brought forth on this channel a new dye. Conceived in convenience, and dedicated to the proposition that all fibers are created equal. I present to you the Union Dye. The Dye Anything Dye. Well, the Dye is Almost Anything Dye. Well, the Dye is Almost Anything Dye with various degrees of effectiveness. Well, the Dye is Almost Anything Dye with various degrees of effectiveness until you wash it. Then you're riding the fade train out of Gettysburg, folks, whether you want to or not. Union dyes are so-called because they are a bunch of other dyes put together in one convenient package. Acid dyes for protein, direct dyes for cellulosic, plus a bunch of other stuff for the synthetics. If I sound derisive, it's because, well, RIT is usually your worst option for most choices. The only reason people go to RIT first is because it's familiar, and human beings as a species are terrified of trying new things, even if it's beneficial for them to do so. Please don't be one of those people. You have nothing to fear from doing fiber reactive or acid dyeing. In fact, you might actually find it a much more pleasant experience, especially because they don't smell. But there are some good uses for RIT, so let's skip the technical bit and go straight to the pros and cons. Pros and cons. Pros. Will dye synthetics to an extent. Good for blends of different fibers. Good for dye matching. The most accessible. Cellulosic fibers can be done in the washing machine. Cons. Not wash fast. Not light fast. Requires a hot water dye bath. A lot of wasted dye. Expensive and not concentrated. Limited color range without dye mixing. The one thing RIT is really good for is dye matching. I spent two thirds of a semester in college learning how to achieve the perfect color using RIT. Because the temperature of the water, the amount of dye, and the length you leave it in the bath all affect the outcome of the color, it makes it a lot easier to do matching than with fiber reactive or acid dyes. But you can still do it with those, it just requires a little bit more testing first. Supplies, small scale, kitchen scale, dedicated spoon, container for pasting, container for mixing, dedicated thermometer, dedicated dye pot large enough for fabric to move freely, non iodized salt for cellulosic, vinegar or citric acid for protein, union dye. There's your basic RIT, there's also eye dye and poly eye dye and RIT Dye More, which is a new one that is specifically for synthetics, so I do recommend you getting that if you are dyeing 100% polyester. Again, weigh your fabric. A box of RIT Dye will dye one pound of fabric or two t-shirts. A bottle of RIT Dye will dye two pounds or four t-shirts. That's in comparison to about 10 yards of fabric for both fiber reactive and acid dyes, by the way. These colors can vary depending on your fiber. Here's a swatch I did in college with various fibers dyed together. See how different they are? The more vibrant ones are going to be your natural fibers and nylon, the paler ones, your synthetics. Also note that some of the colors result in wildly different hues. You really need to do test batches before you dye your real fabric. You can do this in a bucket or tub, at least for cellulosic fibers, but you'll get a much better result on the stove. Start heating your water at least 15 minutes before you begin. It takes some time to heat up. Add a cup of salt to your dye bath for cellulosic fibers or a cup of vinegar for protein fibers. It doesn't specify what you need for synthetics, oddly. Then add a teaspoon of dish detergent to help get an even color. Using a dedicated thermometer, not anything you use for food, this stuff is toxic. Check the temp of your water. Make sure you use an appropriate temperature for your fiber. This is cotton, so it can take a higher temperature. I'm going for about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Powdered dye is much more economical, but I know y'all won't go through that effort if you're using root dye, so I'm using the liquid instead. Give it a good shake. Notice I'm wearing gloves for this one. This stuff stains everything. Be careful. Pour out by weight the amount of dye you need. 
One t-shirt needs two ounces of liquid dye. If you're dyeing something with synthetic fibers in it, you'll want to add more dye and leave it in longer. If you're using the powder, paste up your dye in two cups of hot water. Once again, wash your fabric in detergent of your choice. When you're at the right temperature, add your dye to the dye bath. Gotta be honest, the only reason I bought this at all was to do this demonstration. I never would have used this otherwise. And this t-shirt is just something I found randomly in a tub. I don't know where it came from, and I'm just using it out of desperation so you have something visual to see at this process. So if you're enjoying this video or find it helpful at all, please consider dropping over to my Kofi page and buying me a coffee. Every little bit helps me making content like this. I've linked to it in the description below. Then add your fabric. Set your timer for at least 30 minutes. Stir frequently. Also make sure you work in a well-ventilated area because this stuff stinks. Notice this process is almost identical to acid dye. See, if you can dye with RIT, you can dye with acid dyes and fiber reactive is not that much more complicated. After your time is up, turn off the heat. I was hoping for a more vivid color, but like I said, this is a pure demonstration and it's almost 10 p.m. so I'm calling it done. Rinse it in water and then run it through the machine a couple of times to get out any excess dye. Here's the finished t-shirt. Not really my color, but hey, it'll fade, right? RIT does make a fixative now to keep the color a little bit longer, but it's still not going to be completely color fast. I broke one of the golden rules of dyeing and didn't actually check my fiber content before I dyed this t-shirt. Did not realize it's 50-50 poly cotton and not 100% cotton like the rest of my t-shirts. No wonder it was in a bucket for years and I have no idea why? <laughs> That's why. If I had known, I would have upped the level of dye and upped the temperature to get a stronger color, but since I don't really care what actually happens to this, it's not really going to get worn that much. It's not that big of a deal. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this helps you feel a little bit more confident in trying a different dyeing technique specifically fiber reactive or acid dyes. Like I said, RIT is good for some things, but it just doesn't hold up to the wearability, wash fastness, and brightness of the other two dyes. Almost every historical project that I do on this channel has an element that has been dyed using fiber reactive or acid dyes. It is absolutely one of the best ways to create custom makes. And that's the case for whether you do historical makes like we do on this channel or modern makes or vintage makes or cosplay or whatever. It is so handy. Please let me know if you want to try this. And again, if you have any more questions, drop down in the comments and let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't. And if you want to check out more fun, wacky content on this channel, YouTube is telling me you'd like this one. <laughs> I feel more like Charlie Chaplin than Abraham Lincoln. If I had a space to do it, I'd do a tap dance for y'all.